Hey guys, welcome back. Um, it's been a minute, hasn't it? <laughs> I have been dying to make a nursing video. I know that all you guys hear about lately is coronavirus and I want to talk about something other than that in terms of healthcare. I work in a CVICU, which means that we do anything cardiothoracic we do hearts, lungs, chest, anything, um, surgeries, ailments, that kind of stuff. And so I wanted to talk today about the heart. I want to talk about the function of the heart, the structure of the heart, and bad things that can happen with the heart. Um, I think because I want to keep these videos like 10 to 15 minutes long, I'm going to start with just like the function and structure of the heart and basic hemodynamics. And then my next video, I'll go into different things that can happen to the heart in terms of failure, um, arrhythmias, uh, you know, emergencies, that kind of stuff. So, um, and then obviously I'm gonna go into nursing considerations as well. Um, because I'm a nurse, you know, I wanna talk about what nurses need to look for and nurses can do in terms of not only noticing, but preventing serious complications with the heart. So, I'm a visual person, so I'm gonna try my best to draw while I narrate so that you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, the heart is located in your chest. It is right behind your rib cage. The um, main arteries that supply it run right under like the, the right side of the sternum and rib cage. And then it goes off. It's kind of like the size of your fist. If you take your fist and you set it right here next to your sternum on the left side of your body. Um, this is kind of where it sits, the main part of it right here. The heart is made up of four chambers. You have the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. Now to come into the right atrium, you have the superior vena cava that comes from the brain and the, um, the brachial cephalic areas. And then you have the inferior vena cava, which comes from the lower part of the body, basically the torso down. Um, and that feeds into the right atrium. The blood then travels from the right atrium through the tricuspid valve, um, which means that it's got three little leaflets. Valves, they look like this, and they've got little leaflets that open and close um, to let blood through. A tricuspid valve means it has one, two, three tri leaflets. A bicuspid valve has two leaflets. So it travels from the right atrium through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. It then goes through the pulmonic valve here and out to the lungs through the pulmonary artery, which is kind of like this. Then it goes to the lungs, and then it comes from the lungs back into the left atrium then goes through the mitral valve into the left ventricle and then out through the aortic valve into the aorta, the ascending aorta. Now the ascending aorta has three little branches that come off and they go to different places. They go to your brain, they go to your arms, they go to your subclavians and then down and then it goes off into, these are your renal arteries that feed your kidneys and then it continues down into the abdominal aorta which is what feeds everything in your abdomen, your, um, your guts, your organs, your legs, everything. Um, this is a massive, massive uh, vessel. Now this is what we call the aortic arch. The term artery means that it brings blood that is oxygenated from the heart 
to the body. All arteries lead away from the heart. The term vein means that it brings blood that is unoxygenated back to the heart. All veins lead towards the heart. Just remember, arteries have bright red, full of oxygen blood that leave away, lead away from the heart to feed everything else, and veins have the darker, um, almost purple looking blood that leads from everything else back to the heart to then get oxygen. Now, you, everybody knows that you have the noise of your regular heart, the lub-dub. Lub-dub, lub-dub, lub-dub. That is the sound of your heart muscles beating. The lub, the first sound, is the sound that the, arter the atriums make when they contract. The dub, the second sound, is the sound that your ventricles make when they contract. This also leads us into systolic and diastolic pressure. You've got your blood pressure, the usual number you know is 120 over 80. This is your systolic pressure. This is your diastolic pressure. Systole is when the chambers are contracted. Diastole is when the chambers are relaxed. So this is the pressure that your heart exerts to push blood out to the body, and this is the pressure that is left over in the heart as it is relaxed and filling with blood. If this is too high, it means your heart is contracting too hard, and that puts a lot of wear and tear on the heart because, you know, let's say you were lifting very heavy weights for a very long time, you're gonna be exhausted. If this is too high, it means that your heart is not able to relax enough because there's such a high pressure left over in the heart. So if it can't relax, it can't fill. If it can't fill every time it compresses or contracts, it can't, there's not enough blood in there to push out for the body to get a very adequate amount of blood. If this is too low, it means that your heart isn't pushing hard enough so therefore it's not able to push much blood out to the body. If this is too low, it can indicate that your heart is very dilated, meaning that the chambers are much bigger. Therefore, when it relaxes, there's just not a lot of pressure in there. And that can indicate a very floppy heart, um, which is something we'll get into when we talk about heart failure. But the main thing is systole is when the heart contracts and diastole is when the heart relaxes. In terms of the heart muscle, I like to think of the muscles as springs. You know, you've got a regular spring. When you compress that spring, it will then spring back to its normal state. That's the term spring. If you pull that spring, it will then spring back to its normal state. It's a spring. However, if you ever take one of those little tiny springs that are in like a pen and you stretch it way out, okay, does it ever really go back to the way it was? No, it doesn't. You can kind of, it still can be compressible and stretchable. I mean, it's still in this spring shape, but it's not as functional as this kind of spring. So this, if you stretch the heart muscle way out, it still functions, but not very well. Same with if you have one of those springs you see on like a construction site where they're just this big, thick metal, you know? Can you just walk up to one of those and compress it with your hands? No, because the metal is so thick that it's just very hard. The spring itself is very thick and hard. So it is extremely difficult to stretch and compress. That's why having, you know, very thick heart muscle makes it very hard for the, the heart to do what it needs to do, which is compress and relax, compress and relax, because this is just much harder. This thick metal spring is much harder to compress and stretch. Again, is still a spring, can still function, but just not as well as this guy. Another thing I want to talk about is the electricity of the heart. Now, the heart is a muscle. It 
it can, expands and contracts to push blood around. But what tells the muscle to do so are little electrical nodes that are located in the chambers. So you start with the SA node, that electrical impulse travels to the AV node. When it reaches here, this contracts. This, the electrical impulse then travels to the ventricle, which then tells this to contract. This is a constant, constant run of electricity. And that is when you see your EKG, you've got your P wave, which is the SA node traveling to the AV node. You have your QRS, which is the AV node sending it to the ventricle. And then you have your T wave, which is when everything relaxes and all of this, which is called repolarizing. So SA node goes to AV node, AV node goes to ventricle, and everything relaxes and repolarizes. We're going to talk about when these nodes are dysfunctional in another video and what can, that can mean in terms of the electrical um, conduction in your heart. Now I want to go back to this original drawing because I want to talk about the basic hemodynamics of the heart. I want to talk about preload and afterload. So preload is the pressure inside of your atriums when they are filling with blood or fluid. So all the fluid coming from the body or from the lungs and filling these atriums, that is your preload. Your afterload is the pressure that is sitting outside of these valves that lead from the ventricle out to where they're going, whether it's, if it's the right side, it's to the lungs. If it's the left side, it's to the body. The pressure on the outside of these vessel of these valves is what this chamber has to push against to then have this valve open so the blood can then go where it needs to go. That pressure is your afterload. So the pressure inside as it's filling is the preload. The pressure on the outside as it's contracting is the afterload. So I can, you can imagine if you don't have very much pressure in here, then you're, that means you're not, you don't have very much fluid. So there's not much blood to be pumped through. That can be dehydration. That can be, um, you know, hypovolemic shock. It can be a whole number of things. Um, the afterload, if it's too high, then the heart can't open this valve. You know, if, think of it, this is a door. You know, you have a normal person trying to open the door. If you have a normal person on the other side trying to hold it closed, then it's, you know, you can get it open with, you know, a moderate amount of effort. If you have a child trying to hold it closed, it can open very easily. If you have a giant or, you know, a wrestler or something holding it closed, it's super hard to get this door open. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there for the first video. Just leave it with the function and the um, basic hemodynamics of the heart and the structure. Um, and the next video, I will be getting into heart failure, the different types of congestive heart failure, um, systolic versus diastolic heart failure, that kind of stuff. Um, if you have any suggestions on what you want to hear me talk about, um, except coronavirus, I don't want to talk about that. That's all we ever hear about lately. Um, but anything medical that you want me to discuss, um, any questions you want me to answer, um, yes, please post them, comment down below, like this if you want to hear more um, medical videos from me, and I will continue to make them. So thanks so much for watching. I will see you whenever the hell I see you. <laughs>